Hello everyone, uh, I'm Matthew Bruce, a part-time PhD in French studies student at the University of Birmingham, concentrating on French film studies under the principal supervision of Professor Kate Ince and secondary supervision of Dr Andrew Watts. Today I'll be presenting on anachronistic female heroism in François Ozon's Potiche and Régis Ronsard's Populaire. By way of context, uh, my thesis is entitled Les Plaisirs des Modes, The Portrayal of Anachronistic Heroes in French Comedy Cinema. It's important to note that existing academic scholarship on film comedy and also any sort of theorization of comedy cinema comprises a small literary canon. My work seeks to redress this imbalance by building upon existing scholarship, such as Mast's The Comic Mind, 1979, Horton and Rapp's A Companion to Film Comedy, 2012, as well as French cinema-centric titles such as Lanzoni's French Comedy on Screen, A Cinematic History, 2014, and Harrod and Powery's New Directions in Contemporary French Comedies, 2018. In this research, some of the key themes are the structure and format of comedy, comedy subgenres such as pastiche and parody, as well as the socio-cultural implications of comedy. Firstly, to define anachronism, it is a thing belonging or appropriate to a period other than that in which it exists, especially a thing that is conspicuously old-fashioned. In actuality, an anachronism can be anyone or anything which appears to challenge chronological temporal order. I have discovered that anachronistic heroes are to be found throughout French cinema. My film corpus ranges from the 1950s to as recently as 2020. These characters are found to identify as both male and female and are at odds with the world around them. They often find it difficult to integrate despite their perseverance or sometimes refuse to integrate into society at large. And as is the case with the characters being analysed today, each has a moral imperative behind their fight for integration. Briefly to introduce the films, Potiche is a 2010 film directed by François Ozon. Set in the late 1970s, the film sees the female protagonist Madame Pujol, played by French cinema icon Catherine Deneuve, come to the rescue of her husband's business by heading the company after his breakdown, which comes as a consequence of workers' strike action. Deneuve transitions from a domesticated so-called trophy wife, or potiche, to an eventual feminist figure of some authority and influence, liberated from patriarchal control. Régis Ronsard's Populaire was released merely two years later, in 2012. Set in the 1950s, female protagonist Rose Pomphil, played by Deborah Francois, has ambitions of being a secretary. After seeing evidence of her impressive typing skills, her boss, Louis Echard, played by Romain Dory, trains her to use her skills on the national and international stages of various speed typing contests. This period of training also coincides with the consummation of their romantic office relationship. Firstly, while Madame Pujol in Ozon's Potiche does not lay claim to an anachronistic device as such with which she can wield her power as a female hero, Rose in Ronsard's Populaire has the device of the typewriter which holds important anachronistic value. As is stylistically evident in the in the trailers, both films can be said to ascribe to a kind of vintage cinema. According to Bashir and Cauduro, films which look back in this way and to which are ascribed the term vintage can be placed into one or more of three categories, retro, faux vintage and anachronistic cinema. Describing the latter genre, they say in vintage cinema, the category anachronism applies to those films where the characters engage with obsolete technology. The retro appearance of the props may be explained by the film's focus on characters who are at the very bottom of the social ladder. Old objects represent them in that they are salvage remnants of previous epochs. Old objects and technology may show signs and indexes of their age, or at the opposite, appear as idealised and mint, preserved forever from usage and time decay. Relatedly, Bashir and Cauduro cite Boehm's theorisation of two types of nostalgia, 
restorative, which is indicative of total reconstructions of the past, and reflective, which provides a gap to allow for irony and critical examination. Applying such theories, Cauduro claims that in so-called anachronistic films, pristine objects lean towards a more conservative and restorative form of longing for the past, whereas shabby items are concerned with the pensive reflection on historical time, and therefore reflective nostalgia. Nonetheless, Cauduro confirms that collectively these objects belong to characters who refuse to surrender to the irreversibility of time, in Boehm's words. Continuing this line of thought, Menel attests that it is the obsolescence, or the quality of being obsolete, that the typewriter has, which enables the nostalgic recuperation of the fantasy of the 1950s heterosexual and patriarchal office romance, which Populaire projects as the foundation of the modern nation. In fact, Menel goes one step further in affirming that enabling visible speed, speed seemingly the byword for modernity in the film, makes the uh, machine the hero of this heritage film. Instead of resurrecting a real person in its final credit sequence, Populaire includes grainy black and white archival footage of the IBM's electric typewriter. Therefore, Menel bypasses Rose completely in declaring the typewriter itself the anachronistic hero of the piece. However, I would like to argue that the typewriter, coming back to an earlier point, is the means of facilitation by which Rose achieves anachronistic heroism. At a later point in the film, Rose is asked to help promote the marketing of the pink Chappy typewriter by its team. Despite the commodification of this new shiny typewriter to suit the capitalist marketplace, the use of it prevents her from reaching her full potential for speed at the international competition she has entered. So she discards it in favour of her old machine from her dad's store and wins. This nostalgic gesture advocates a return to the past as a time before typewriters were branded to target women. Bashir and Kauduro declare that Rose uses her agency to opt for efficiency over the further commodification <clears throat> and reification of stereotypical pink femininity. Menel points out that in the special features on the DVD of Populaire, actor Nicolas Bedeau declares that there was a process of acquiring outdated machines and making them look new. As the French actors did not know how to use a typewriter and initially thought there was virtually no difference between using them and using a modern day computer, they had to go to the Czech Republic to find experts who used a specific technique on these machines. In Bedo's own words, he found this incredibly anachronistic. Returning again to the consideration of both Populaire and Potiche, for the female protagonists of both films, there is a battle between their advocation of feminism, and what I would term patriarchal normativity, which predominated in the 1950s and through to the 1970s. As Menel puts it, feminism and labour conjoin in Populaire's ambivalent nostalgia, typical of heritage cinema. The film invokes familiar feminist tropes and narrative conventions, such as a young woman's liberating move from a small town to the city and independence through wage labour. In the 1950s in France, mobility was the categorical imperative of the economic order. The emphasis on the working girl associated with the big city creates a palimpsest or working document of historical moments from the 19th century, the 1920s and the late 1950s shot through with an awareness of the present. Turning our attention to Ozon's Potiche, itself an adaptation of a 1980s play, famously denounces, as Cellier puts it, all forms of male domination and female alienation. The portrayal of Madame Pujol as a nascent feminist character is given credence, I would say, by Catherine Deneuve's quality as a star and as a symbol of the French nation, which, as Saris puts it, communicates a timelessness, cinematic and otherwise. Menel supports this in saying the film's portrayal of sex undermining capitalist ownership echoes the feminist critique of the imbrication of sexual and class politics 
and of the mutually stabilizing function of patriarchy and capitalism. What appears on the surface as sexual farce reveals an understanding of the value of female sexuality and its reproductive function for the working of capitalism. On the other hand, while the film Populaire does not feature such an ardent fight against the patriarchy, it does include some significant questioning of the heterosexual male-female relationship and the balance of power. At the start of the film, Rose seems like the timid ingenue, always at the beck and call of her boss. However, when their training for the typing competitions coincides with their romantic involvement, Rose begins to assert her equal position in that relationship, voicing her opinion on Louis to a friend. J'aime le type torturé, I like the tortured type of man. The roles to an extent reverse, Rose becomes a dominant figure in the eye of the typing competitions, furiously competing against her female peers, while her Boston lover Louis appears to be the one watching somewhat apprehensively on the sidelines. As a former athlete who has never really been a champion, Louis to an extent lives vicariously through Rose in these competitions. Furthermore, Potiche and Populaire are both situated in an era in which nostalgic cinema was extremely popular in France, a country, as Fevry describes, increasingly obsessed with its memory and valorisation of its national past. This era coinciding with the premiership of Nicolas Sarkozy and his questionable politics of national memory brought with it a barrage of so-called sepia cinema. The term sepia, of course, traditionally associates itself with the burnished quality which old photographs have. The term sepia could be considered pejorative in the sense of backward looking. This description very well aligns itself with the policies of Sarkozy's presidency, which promoted the recollection of an ideal France and the aim of eluding any tragic or painful element which might damage or destroy that image. This was a stark departure from the previous premiership of Jacques Chirac, who was the first president to pub publicly engage with a policy of repentance and an acknowledgement of France's national failures in its wartime collaborationist past, including most significantly aiding in the deportation of Jewish people to concentration camps. While Sarkozy's memorial politics manifestly disagreed with the general French public, it is said that a lot of the same people really enjoyed the nostalgic, squeaky clean sepia cinema of which Populaire was certainly a part and of which Potiche was arguably also a part. Fevry says cinema provided an outlet for people to indulge their rosy, nostalgic fantasies without being seen to be complicit with state views. In the cover of dark theatres, French spectators of sepia films could cultivate a restorative nostalgia that they were far from approving in public. This restorative nostalgia was all the more approved since it was, since it was not being expressed in the form of political action, but in that of family entertainment. In conclusion, the female protagonists of both Potiche and Populaire are evidentially SFCs or strong female characters in feminist parlance at the end of the films, if not entirely at the beginning. To differing extents, both characters have to deal with political and gender motivated injustices in ways that were largely anachronistic in their respective time periods. I return to Menel's figurative use of the word palimpsest, which in a literal sense is a manuscript or piece of writing material on which later writing has been superimposed, to wit a sort of working document or canvas. I would say that this word aptly describes both these films, canvases on which anachronistic behaviours or devices are quite deliberate, a postmodernist reviewing of the past which is cognizant of subsequent changes which come together to make the present. I recall scholars Smith and Higson and their study on so-called postmodern nostalgia. Higson declared that for postmodern nostalgists, the irrecoverable is made attainable, the past and present flattened out. Expanding further, Smith declares postmodern nostalgia is a nostalgia for potential, a nostalgia for a moment of possibility, before the mass movements of counterculture brought about substantial social progress. It is a longing for the future of his, her, their own past, as the case may be.
Thank you.